Hey, <laughs> and welcome to Computers for complete, the Completely Clueless. Yeah, we were pretty we're clueless. We're having a hard time beginning. just getting our clueless show off the ground uh, this morning. It was a little tough for a little bit. Well, there. that's all right. We're going we're gonna to settle down here. We're going to be talking today about um, some of the things that we've discussed in the past. We're going to review. Always good. Always good to review some stuff, yeah. And uh, we're going to be um, really talking about the, the thing that probably people want to do after we, we did word processing yeah, already, right? It's very common. Probably that's maybe the number one thing people want to do with their computers. Write a, mm -hmm. write a node, write I, some stuff out. Maybe. I, I put it around number three. You put it at three? Okay, what would you put number one in? Number one, I, I'd have to agree with uh, statistics and go with email. People email. love email. That's the primary thing people do on the internet is, or, or with their computers, computers yeah. is they use email. Well, okay, so what's Communication. number two? Surfing the internet. Surfing the internet. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about yeah. in today's show. And we'll bring up our list of objectives on the screen here. As soon as somebody nudges Greg, then wake him up. And there we go. All right, good job, Greg. So we've been talking about, and I want to talk just for a minute about some of the things that we've reviewed. Remember, um, a lot of folks out there are, are getting nervous around their computer. Mm -hmm. um, and so we spent a, a few weeks talking about, you know, just the basics, how to create files and folders, how to organize them, how to read the instructions. Oh, uh, I know. That's something I'm good not, at. Not something. But, you know, how to, how to kind of work within a computer environment. Okay. Um, and, and I think some of it has to do with the people who are writing the programs. Mm -hmm. um, they think one particular way, and they make assumptions about how you and I are going to interact with our computer and how we're going to think. And sometimes they're wrong. Yeah, and they, they try to steer the ship, right. and it's not always the way that's we want right. to go. And sometimes we don't expect to have happen what happens on screen. So that's the thing. Just kind of slow down a little bit when you're using your, inter, uh, using your computer. Read the instructions if you run into a problem. Think a little bit about what it is you're trying to, to do, and, and just yeah. take your time. Don't be nervous. Well, one right? thing that they did start when they, they started just making software for us, and we're talking here about reviewing in the user interface, if you think about it, that menu idea has translated right. to so many things, and there are standards now. Right. So that, you know, we have a lot of things that, for example, if you look at the uh, word processor, you're going to see file in the upper left corner. Almost every program I know has file in the upper left corner. So right. you're so looking at the same exactly. place. Exactly. So we're talking about a lot of common, um, you know, interface locations mm -hmm. and functions and all that stuff. So that was our first series of shows. And in our second set of shows, we talked about word processing and how you can work with fonts and select items mm -hmm. and put in images. And it's all doable by the average person, no it's matter very easy. how clueless they might be, just yeah. like us. Yeah. We stumble through a lot right. of stuff. That's how we, we learn a lot of this. But, hey, guess what? Today, folks, we're going to talk about something that Lee and I have spent a lot of time with yeah. and, and a lot of, and still do um, in, in our regular jobs, and that's the Internet. Um, and let's talk a little bit about what that Internet is. What, uh -huh. what does it mean, number one? What does Internet mean? Well, the Internet, as you have up here on the uh, slide, it's basically an interconnection of networks of computers. And it, right. it, you know, that really simplifies the complexity of it. Absolutely, because it's, it's not only a, a, a network of, of connected computers, but they're worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I go to Google, for instance, I'm making a direct connection between my computer and a computer owned by Google somewhere Probably out in California. <laughs> Somewhere. I mean, well, you know, there's some of these. It's true. They've got different uh, well, country for, to, uh, a of foundations fact, Google, of Google. Okay, here, Google has, has so much, um, they have so much power requirements for the computers that run their portion of the Internet. They've actually located some of their data centers next to um, uh, hydroponic dams, dams out really? in the western United States. So that you have a dam right there creating uh, electricity, you know, electricity yeah. <laughs> and electricity is going right to oh, their facilities. It's good thinking. Yeah, it's good thinking. Google uh, tends to think yes, out there they, in the edge. They a do. Bit. So that's just one example of a, a single website. So um, it's a connected network of computers, and you've got to have two things in order to take part in the Internet. Yeah, right? Probably the first one's a computer. Uh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> you've got to have three things. We assume you have a computer. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, you have to have two things for your computer, then, shall okay. we say, Lee. Uh, and the first one is a connection, right? So and that's a little wire going from your computer to something <coughs> to that the internet. connects you to the Internet. Right, and, and there are lots of different ways to do that. And I don't know, do you want to dive in and look at some of the statistics now, or you want to finish what we're doing well, here? Uh, speaking of connection, I was just thinking about how old you are and how old I am. Yes, I, I try <laughs> not to think about how old you are, Lee. I've got my own problems. <laughs> well, when I first started using the computer, I got my first modem, high-speed, 
300 baud modem. Wow, what does that mean in real life? That means real 300 language? bits per second. In other words, it could transmit, and if you look at it in characters, 30. 30 so, characters at a time? Right. At a minute? Today's, it wouldn't work on. In fact, we didn't use the Internet much back then. Right. It was more local bulletin board systems. Right. We actually have the little annoying sound that opens the show, the mm -hmm. squawking of a, and you probably, I don't think I ever did this, you probably actually had a phone that you that you laid in a device? or did Never you had use the one coupler. Of those? Yeah. yeah. I used them in college. But right, right, not, yeah. Not so, I mean, the, the way that we connect to the Internet has changed phenomenally. Yeah. I mean, when we started out, it was phone line, mm -hmm. and you had a, a lot of phone and line. you dialed up. And you use your phone line, and of course nobody could call you now because your phone is busy. Actually, the bad part was uh, at the beginning they didn't have that little code you could put in to disable call waiting, so you got <laughs> somebody, bumped off. <laughs> somebody called you, and you're suddenly no longer the. Or internet. they got a busy signal because you didn't have call waiting feature. Right, and, it, and, and some people still use a dial-up modem. Some people because it's much much less expensive. A lot. Um, but most people have gone over to high speed. Yes, Internet broadband. Connections. Right, broadband connections. There's a number of ways to do that, depending on where you live and what's available in your neighborhood. Just kind of in general, you can either go one of two types of Internet connections, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can use uh, what's called a DSL. And that's usually through the phone company. Direct subscriber line, mm -hmm. and that would be contracted with your phone company. All right, so AT&T in our area is uh, where I get my DSL connection. That's what I use at home. Um, the second way is to go through a cable provider like yep. uh, Comcast, and um, you know you have you basically you tap into your regular cable, yep. but you've got a special device called a modem, cable modem that sits between your cable connection and goes and connects to your computer. Yeah. DSL same way, it's a little special device, and um, we're not going to obviously go into all that, but the technology uh, well, behind that is amazing. Uh, it's fun to learn if you have the time to go out and learn that, right. but and it's not something you need to know to use the Internet. No, because the companies that sell this service will, will help you, and Lee, mm -hmm. I know this pains you greatly, because what is Internet service not, Lee? It is not free. It is not Regrettably, free. there's no such thing as free Internet today. Right. Well, that, well maybe that's not, maybe this. You can still go down to a place like uh, Panera Bread. Um, you can where tag onto the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi mm -hmm. wi basically takes the internet connection and broadcasts it out across yeah. the air. And if you've got a laptop, you can sit there and connect to that Wi-Fi connection in some location. So, in that those works. cases, that's free. But Panera Bread is paying, in that case, yeah. for the internet connection. And then you've got the other problem: they really expect you to buy some food while you're there. So. Right. So it's it's not exactly exactly free, <laughs> but. You're going to pay something, and, and depending on, on, on the provider and what other services you have, it could be as little as $20 a month, would you say? Yeah. $25 a the, month? Yeah, 20, about $20, $25. DSLs a month. come down a little bit. Right, and if you want to have real, real high-speed connections, some special stuff, you can add more and you can pay more. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's not free, and you have to basically kind of line up your interconnection with uh, either your, co your cable company or your phone provider, and away it's you go. It's one of those things that's worth it. I think so, too. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about Internet, how it developed, and then we're going to talk to you about how you can get on the Internet if you're not there already.